so good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. And uh, thank you for the introduction, Sassy. So um, as you mentioned, I'm the head of public and community engagement at the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit in Vietnam, and in particular based in um, Ho Chi Minh City. So in the context of strengthening patient experiences and, and patient outcomes, um, I want to share an example of how we've worked to support healthcare workers um, as they do this, as they support patients. And um, I'm going to give an example from a project called Beyond the Hospital that we conducted in uh, a hospital in Ho Chi Minh City about five years ago. Um, so the rationale uh, for this project was an observation from our um, CNS, that's Central Nervous System, um, research team that the patients who had recovered from an infection uh, were actually often left with very severe sequelae and disabilities and then had poor long-term outcome and um, so although they they had recovered they although they had recovered from the infection they were not well um, and uh, so what we wanted to do through this project was to understand um, the patient's needs better understand how um, we could support healthcare workers to better support the patients and uh, together to develop um, a discharge uh, pack, discharge resources, and with, with the aim of um, improving outcomes. Um, so the flow of the project was we had a qualitative research phase and then the data used from this went on to inform the development of um, resource packages, uh, DVDs, and some films. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of these methods, but that's just a, a, a flow of the project that was, was took about two years. Um, so the methods we, in you, we used um, included sort of standard interviews and focus, group, um, focus groups, not only with the patients, but also with carers um, and families, because in the Vietnamese setting, much of the day-to-day um, -day care uh, of feeding and changing of sheets, et cetera, happens by the carers in the hospitals, um, uh, not by the health staff. So they were an important stakeholder group for us to involve. But then we also used some participatory methods, which is what I would like to share in this talk. And um, So firstly, just some of the data um, or, or findings from the interviews with patients and their carers. Um, and it showed a huge number of challenges that they faced. I mean, not, surprising, not surprisingly, in, including the financial burden, the ongo ongoing physical challenges, mental health challenges, and the concern that they would be a burden on the family. But what became clear through these interviews was that the challenges didn't stop when they left hospital. In fact, sometimes they even got bigger and one, one patient said it was like um, the hidden iceberg under the sea um, was the, the, the picture that they used of going home. And um, what, else, what else became clear was that there was a lack of support when they left hospital and that they felt very unprepared um, the carers felt unprepared to take these often uh, severely disabled patients home. Um, don't get overwhelmed by this slide. Um, it's just to show you that, that through the interviews with the healthcare workers also showed a huge range of challenges and stresses from them on their jobs. Um, from our department, we felt that we were in a place to, um, to help them with these two, two aspects of their work, that on communications, um, where often dealing with anxious, anxious patients or carers, um, or answering hard, breaking bad news, answering hard questions, dealing with violent patients, and then going on to manage their own, um, em own emotions. And um, the, this is the area that we then have, have worked with them um, and as one participant uh, said to us, 90% um, of the complaints coming from patients and carers were related to the communication that they had had with um, a doctor or with a healthcare worker. 
So in response to these needs of the patients and these needs um, from the healthcare workers, we um, went on to conduct a number of um, activities with the healthcare workers. These included workshops such as um, working on empathy, physiotherapy training because physiotherapy isn't um, routinely done um, on the wards. And then um, these uh, more participatory um, events such as the, the um, a photo exhibition. So. This was a photo exhibition, a, a photo, sorry, a photo project that we conducted with patients and their family members. We asked them on return home to take photos of aspects of their life that proved challenging and to take photos of things in their life that helped them overcome these challenges. What was it that kept them going? What were the successes? And um, together with the patients and their carers, they created posters with, with captions of, um, their life post, post discharge, their life beyond the hospital. And at the end of this small project, we held an exhibition in the hospital where we invited a couple of these um, patients back and we invited the healthcare workers to come and look at the posters. And um, it, was, it was a surprisingly moving experience. And what we realized is that for many of the healthcare workers, particularly those on the intensive care units, they rarely had closure with patients. They saw them very ill. Some of these, um, one of the women in, in, in these photos had been in a coma for five months. When she came out of the coma, she was then moved to another ward and, and the doctors who had been caring for her never saw her up walking. And then to meet her again or to see photos of her on a beach with her family and with children was deeply moving. The other thing that came out of this photo exhibition is that healthcare workers, um, as, as is um, so nicely expressed in this quote, realized that the extent of the challenges that patients were facing as they left hospital and realized that they, um, there was very little to support them um, in terms of discharge planning or, or resources. And then the second um, sort of participatory method that we used with them is um, participatory theatre. And this is based on um, a th a th the theatre of the oppressed, which was developed by Augustus Boal, who was an activ a Brazilian activist and an artist in the 1970s. And um, our aim in using this sort of role play in theatre was to help healthcare workers understand patients' experiences and to um, have increased empathy for them. So we partnered with a professional theatre company. Um, we drafted a script very closely based, to, based on um, the interview data. Um, we cross-checked the script with healthcare workers. Uh, there was some disagreement. They, they felt it was too negative. Um, one or two of them felt it was too negative. So we had a, we had a series of, of um, reviews and, and developing the script together. And this was actually, I've highlighted this here, that it was actually a very long process. And I feel that in reflection, that the, the, um, the quality of the script was, was hugely important in um, how, how much we got out of, or the healthcare workers got out of uh, the, the, the role play after that. And based on, um, based on particular challenges that the um, patients and their families had identified the script had three had three stages admission to hospital um, during treatment and um, diagnosis and, and, and discussion of diagnosis and then discharge or, or pre-discharge so the play was put on by professional actors um, for uh, two groups of about 70 or 80 um, doctors and nurses and we had intended to have two shows, the first one for senior doctors and the second for, for the junior doctors and nurses because we had um, assumed that the uh, junior doctors perhaps would, not, would feel less able to take part and less able to speak out if they had um, their seniors there. But um, what happened in the end is because of timings, uh, it was a complete mix. Um, and in... Um, in line with this method of, uh, of the forum theatre or participatory theatre, the audience is invited to stop the performance at any point and 
um, suggest an alternative way of dealing with the of, of um, role playing the scene um, or dealing with the situation. And if they're willing, they're then invited to come up and reenact a scene from their own perspective. Uh, so on reflection, um, we we really didn't know how this would how this would go, whether the doctors would um, would appreciate this type of role play. Um, but uh, overall, there was a, a very strong positive response to um, to these workshops. The mix of the doctors didn't seem to matter. In fact, some of the junior doctors said they found it really helpful hearing how a senior doctor would have um, enacted that scene. They um, there was a number of people participated, and uh, in the feedback at the end, over ninety percent said that they um, felt more empathy and that they. Um, that they would like to have more of these sessions and they identified issues that they felt would be really um, helpful to to try out scenarios in this sort of safe air safe zone and such as explaining sensitive issues dealing with conflict and this photo here um, the the, uh, the lady in the white coat she's actually the vice head of the hospital and she came up to um, reenact as a doctor, um, a scene that she felt um, could have been acted in, in, in a different way. Um, so uh, the project, the project team, we had a number of people on the projects uh, um, and I want to acknowledge the help. It was led by Annabelle Audier and, um, and Dan Tan, who's a social scientist um, and a number of other people. We had a lot of um, input from, from doctors themselves and um, an advisory board, including two disabled members. But what I really wanted to highlight here is that we had a very strong support from the hospital directors themselves. And um, this has gone on to mean that there's been a much um, sort of much bigger uh, impact than we had first imagined would be possible. And um, the hospital um, has gone on to establish a social work department and uh, ongoing communication training for healthcare workers. Um, and then from our, from our side in the engagement department, we have, um, we have really worked on developing resources for healthcare workers. And then in, in partnership with um, Moana, who's going to speak about this in a minute, um, and SASI and others at uh, Kemri and the Global Health Network, we have uh, created a website called the Connect website. And this is a, a website that's, that's specifically aimed at supporting field workers and healthcare workers, um, kind of the, the people who are on the front line. So I would encourage you, um, if you are a, a, a health worker or a field worker to look at this site, um, please give us feedback and please use it. So that, that's it from me. And I would like to, um, I'll stop sharing and hand over to Moana.